Welcome back to Legends. I'm Durka. Mikhail Kuchisov is returning to the game for Global XP. This was one of the first Tier 7 Premium Cruisers to enter the game all those years ago. So, has she been power crept? Is she even worth bringing to your port now? Let's go check her out. The match in the background is on Greece and we spawn in the middle. Kudo is really a long range support cruiser, so we're going to set up accordingly and start setting fires on as many battleships as I can. And then when the herd clears out, you'll be more free to make some moves in this ship. At the start of matches though, it's very dangerous. This is a huge target, concealment is awful, so hunker down until it thins out. Now, this ship has been completely overshadowed by the Ochakov. That's no secret. Ochakov is still the better ship, no doubt. And other ships like the Mines and the Suzuya have also knocked Kudo down a couple notches, so the power creep is there for sure. But she is still a great ship and can be a lot of fun. This was one of my first Tier 7 premiums I ever got. I was actually free to play for the first few months of this game, and I played the heck out of this ship, and it's fun to come back to her all these years later. So for starters, let's see how to set her up. We are using aiming systems, prop, concealment, and MBM-3. The commander, Kuznetsov, full DPM with a double fire build, fully packed for the extra consumables, they will come in handy, and my typical cruiser inspirations are Makawa and Membeli. Agile build? Mm, maybe but I wouldn't. You're not inherently fast enough for this type of setup like Ochakov, Suzuya, or Otago. You're the size of a small battleship and you have a pretty average, well, a kind of above average turning circle. Plus, the biggest reason to not do an agile build, you have smoke screens. <laughs> so what's the point? You can do full agility if you like, because Kudo does have one very surprising statistic no one ever really considers, and that is one of the fastest stock rudder shifts of all the Tier 7 cruisers. People never really expect that. Double rudder and nothing else, it hangs out around 3 seconds, which is cool to see with a big girl like this. But really, I would just use those smoke screens, build DPM and fires, and that's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. For those considering her for global XP, let's see how she stacks up to the other tier 7 pack right now because it has changed a lot from when this ship first launched. And then we'll end with giving you some gameplay advice. Now health points, it's middle of the pack, it's not good, it's not bad, and she has pretty average heals. The armor scheme isn't amazing. It's pretty standard for Soviet cruisers, mostly wrapped in 26 millimeters of armor. You're not going to stand up to any 15 inch shells or larger from battleships, and that's basically any tier 7 or tier 8 battleship that you're going to see. And unlike the blessed Ochakov, Russian bias Ochakov, you'll not be pulling as many overpins because of how chonky Kudo is. Ask me how I know. <laughs> She's a bit of a glass cannon, but if you've played other Soviet light cruisers, you already know the drill. The guns though, well, they're amazing. Not the highest DPM nowadays with Suzuya, Cleveland, and Weimar outclassing her by quite a bit. She takes eighth place overall of my tier seven cruisers for HE. Fourth place for AP. What the guns do offer though is very fast shell velocity and flat firing arcs, and it makes hitting your targets much, much easier. 950 meters per second is downright fast. And for comparison, Cleveland is 760. So your shells are going to hit their targets a second and a half faster than Cleveland's at 10 kilometers. So it makes it really hard for your enemies to dodge. Now the HE shells, they're going to shatter a lot. That's just the name of the game with 152 millimeter guns at tier seven. And she's not blessed with some of the things that German cruisers or Ochakov or Belfast 43 get. Kudo can pin 25 millimeters of armor stock. Ochakov and Belfast, 30. Weimar and Mines, 38. So lots and lots of shatters, and that's why I specced fully into fire, and I have mine at 17% in this game, which is pretty saucy. Moving on. Kuchazov has some pretty decent torpedoes, which might be a surprise if you've played up the Soviet light cruiser line. They reach 8 kilometers. They're actually pretty useful. 
Ochakovs are better, of course, but still, 8 kilometer range and close to 14,000 damage per torp, and 5 on each side, you can be a threat to anyone who gets too close. Now her agility we kind of already talked about. She's really not that fast, 33 knots, it falls behind your Soviet brethren. Most of the cruisers of the tech tree line are pretty fast in a straight line. And then the last statistic to remember about Kuchasov. Her base concealment is terrible. 13.8 kilometers is tied for third worst at the tier, only behind the Riga. And you're tied with Ochakov. So I definitely would recommend Macau or something to cut the concealment a little bit. Of course, the concealment module is always a good choice. I just happen to prefer rudder in slot three for most of my cruisers. It's just my preference. Usually by the end of the game, I end up doing something stupid <laughs> and the extra little mobility usually helps me. And this game, you'll see it actually comes in handy at the very end. So how do I play this thing? Well, like most Soviet light cruisers, Bajoni, Shores, Shapi, Ev, this is mainly a long range support ship. She doesn't really have the armor for up close fighting, definitely not going head to head with any battleships. Her turret traverse is terrible, and if you get in too close, you're really giving up your main advantages in this ship by doing so. And those advantages would be super long range guns with good firing arcs and your smokescreen. These are what make this cruiser unique, and I will say you can be an absolute menace if played correctly. Now, at the start of this game, like I mentioned, we took a cautious course posted up in the middle and hunkered down. At the beginning of the game, it's too hard to angle against enemies and dodge shots from multiple battleships when there are so many ships in the game, especially if you're in the middle on a map like Greece, you can literally be shot by basically all nine ships. I will say though, once things thin out and cool down, Kutuzov doesn't have to be relegated to backline duty. You can push up and definitely take on other cruisers 1v1, and we'll kind of demonstrate it. In fact, at the very end, we get to joust with the Soviet cruiser that stole Kutuzov's thunder, the Ochakov. She does have sonar, thankfully. That can be a big help in rooting out destroyers and protecting yourself from torpedoes. When you smoke up, I would mostly always turn that sonar on, especially if there's anything with torpedoes in the area. The other key aspect of Kutuzov to remember is shell selection. Spamming HE is great, we can set lots of fires, but these Soviet AP shells are some of the best 6 inch shells in the game due to their high velocity. You can absolutely rip ships apart who are broadside. Alright, as we sail in here to finish this one off, let's talk about the other uh, GXP cruisers you would have to choose from. Suzuya and Izuma, those are at the top of my list, they're phenomenal. If you're curious, we have some videos on this channel about both of those ships. They'll be at the end of the video. You can click on them. They're both excellent choices for 750,000 global XP. Suzuya is the best HE spamming cruiser at tier 7. Azuma is tough as nails and a very fun battle cruiser to play. Atago, kind of long in the tooth in my opinion. I would rather play Megami. She has better DPM. And the Prince Eugen. The same. I would probably rather play the Tech Tree Hipper after it got its buff. It's really the better ship with better DPM. If I would have to rank them, I would say Suzuya, number one, Azuma, Kuchizov, Atago, and then Prince. And that might be controversial, but that's just my opinion. So take it with a grain of salt. The Kuchizov is definitely worth looking into. If you're curious about getting her, I would recommend you at least play up through the Shapayev in the Soviet light cruiser line. Shapi and Kudo are very, very similar ships, so if you like the Shapiev's gameplay, I think you would enjoy this Soviet cruiser. Let me know what you guys think of her in the comment section down below. If you're thinking of picking this ship up, awesome. Or if she's an old favorite of yours and you've had her since the beginning, I would love to hear from you guys. Now this game's coming to an end, and thank you to this guy for coming back and fighting. It's way more fun when people do this rather than just run and hide and waste everyone's time. So thank you, sir. Luckily, we slammed on the brakes, used that magnificent rudder that people don't expect, and we'll go ahead and pick up the dub.
Overall, really fun ship. I've missed playing this thing, and I think I might go back to playing her a little bit more. Decent game. I would appreciate it if you guys hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for future videos so they don't miss any content. Catch you guys in the next one. See ya.